Hey, what's up? And welcome back to How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. And today we are taking a deep dive into appraisals. So if you're buying or selling commercial real estate, you're going to be involved in an appraisal. And the first question is maybe what the heck is an appraisal, right? Yeah, most people, they think of an appraisal as uh, when they're buying their own home. Correct. Uh, and they pay, you know, a thousand bucks to have somebody appraise the house. And typically it comes in at about whatever they've agreed to purchase it. They want it to be as high as possible. So, and is that the same in commercial? You want, is there any reason you would, don't want it to be as high as possible? Well, I don't think it matters. If you don't like money. Yeah. I mean, when you, yeah. when you're buying, it doesn't really matter. You want the appraisal to come in at, uh, at the purchase price that yeah. you've agreed to pay. And somehow, magically, yeah, it always ends up there. Seems to happen. Well, okay, but that's, that's for a reason. Uh, the definition of an appraisal is, uh, do we remember that? I don't. Okay. I think it's, uh, you know, what a duly motivated uh, buyer and, uh, would pay for the property and a duly motivated seller would, uh, would sell the property at in a competitive market or something so, close yeah, to that. Like that. It's used to find market value. Okay. Very and, close. And so, you know, the reason most appraisals come back at the contract price is because that contract, if the property has been marketed and there's nothing funny about the property and the seller isn't going through a divorce or probate or something, then this, the contract represents the definition where you, you have, you put it out there to all the buyers. This is what a, a duly motivated buyer that wants to buy a house, let's say, and this is what the seller agreed to pay. This is this is a, uh, a congru congruence of the price, the value being decided by both of these parties. And so the appraiser that's looking at it doesn't have any reason to come drastically different on the value because the, he, these people are telling him this is what yeah, the market this, this drove the, the, market. the value yeah. to. Yeah. So let's let's get in first question. We found a property we want to buy, we put in an offer, we're under contract and we're talking to the lender, right? The lender says, hey, we'll get you in a committee in a few weeks. We'll get you final approval, you know, in a month from now, but we need to order that appraisal. So the first step is don't freak out that you don't have a Rolodex of appraisals because your lender is going to order it. Your lender should order it most of the time. Most okay. of the cases you can order it yourself. The lender has to order it. Correct. Okay, so he's ordering or she's ordering it. The bank's ordering it. Lender's ordering. And who's paying for it? That's a great question. You are. You're paying for it whether you buy the property or not. The lender is going to send you a bill. If okay. it's if you don't have a reputation of buying property, if you haven't used this lender before, most lenders are going to send you a term sheet. You're going to sign that. And they won't order it until you give them the term sheet and maybe a five thousand dollars deposit, just so they cover their time and cost ordering that appraisal. Because yeah, like so I like wouldn't ordering it. I wouldn't let the lender order the appraisal until you have a uh, a really strong term sheet or a commitment from the bank. Agreed. Okay. Uh, because you don't want them to order the appraisal and then have them come back and tell you, well, we're not going to loan on it. Or we're not going to loan those terms. And now you're on the hook to pay for that appraisal. So you really want to get a lender that is committed to the terms that you like, that you're willing to close on the deal on yeah. those, based on those terms. Then you give them the go ahead. They'll order the appraisal. Most commercial property appraisals are going to be anywhere from three to $6,000. Okay. Quick question. What if you, at that point, you change lenders, what happens to the appraisal? That's, that's a great question. Decent odds are you will change lenders. You'll probably go to the second or third option because the first guy thinks you're not going to bid him out, but you really are. <laughs> um, so yeah, the you call lender A, you know, the first uh, person and say, hey, Mr. Lender, I'm probably going to use this other lender. Um, your terms didn't seem to be good enough. I need you to assign the appraisal over to them, right? Okay. And it's got to be on their their list, their internal list of how they want it appraised. You know, the, I've never had it happen where, they, the bank came back to me and said, hey, that appraiser is not on my approved appraiser list. We'll, we'll have to order a new one. Every single time we've been able to get it assigned. But the thing we're paying attention to is the chain of custody, right? They just want to make sure you're not tampering with it. Yeah. That's why the lender has to order it. That's why it has to be or assigned from lender to lender. And the lender's not going to do that until you pay for it. Correct. Okay. Okay, so you have to. I thought maybe it got settled up in closing, but you'll actually. It, it does as long as you stay with the same. Lender. Stay with the same lender, okay. but if you want that lender to assign it to another lender oh, that you, you're going to you, use, then he'll want you to pay for okay, it up front. Yeah, yeah right. Correct. Okay. And right. then going back to your term sheet, um, a lot of people may be getting bullied on their first deal by the lender, and the lender may say, "Hey, I have to have the appraisal before I can give you a signed commitment letter." But what you need to know is that every commitment letter from every single bank is going to look different. Even the same bank uh, commitment letter to commitment letter is going to be different because of the uh, nuances and intricacies of that deal. So just say, hey, give me a commitment letter and then put an out in there for appraised value. As long as it appraises, you'll honor your side. If it doesn't, it gives you an out. 
easy fix, right? Yeah, you don't have to have the appraisal done before you get a commitment or a term sheet. The, the, the commitment can be based on 80% of the appraised value, whatever that is. Correct. So and so, about how long does it take to to get an appraisal once it's ordered Man, for commercial? This is some good questions. Um, this is it's a great just, question. It varies three to three to four weeks. Three oh, to four. Wow. Three to four weeks. It could take longer, but I mean, three to four weeks is pretty standard, and that really is a long lead time when you think about it, because you've got you know sixty days to close this deal. As soon as you get in, you're not going to be ordering an appraisal. You'll spend the first week or two, depending on how judicious you were in sending it out before you got it under contract, just bidding out your lenders, right? But what we want to encourage or what I want to encourage you to do is find a lender who's giving decent terms and have them or have them order the appraisal. You, you're not at a disadvantage. Yeah, you're you're going to pay for it either yeah, way. Right. And at least you're not waiting on it on the back end. Yeah, if you can get it ordered and you know you're going to proceed with the deal on some level, yeah, get it. go ahead and get it ordered. Uh, you know, let, let's talk about the timeline of that four weeks. What's going to happen is it's going to go to an appraiser that bid on it to the bank. Yep. It's going to sit for three and a half weeks. Yep. Then they're going to take a look at a couple nearby properties and they're going to shove it in with like 200 pages of like standard form documents that tell everybody who they are and why they do what they do. And, the and then you're going to get it mm -hmm. yeah, about four weeks. So, so, it, so um, like when I get the last one I got on my house, do they just go around and they look at other properties that they consider similar and, and their comps? Is that the only method of appraisal that commercial yeah, there's three does, three methods of appraisal. Uh, you know any of them? I know comps. All right, comps. So that's typically how people do uh, residential. residential yep. Is they'll look in the in the similar neighborhood, similar size. They'll pick two or three comps, and then depending on. Well, this one has a pool. This one doesn't. This Adam's one has, stuff. you know, three car garages has two. Yeah. And so they, yeah, they'll add and subtract value based on that. And yeah. they'll come up with what they feel is a reasonable value for that home. Comparable sales approach. Um, and that, that happens in commercial real estate, but less so. Well, what I found is that they do all three, right? And then they pick the best one or they average them out and then kind of have the value from there. Yeah, I don't know if they always do that with residential, but commercial, they're using the three methods, which right. are comp sales. Yep. And commercial real estate is is harder to use comp sales because unless you're buying a single tenant Wendy's, let's say, uh, you may have a comp, but even then the market's different. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a neighborhood of Wendy's yeah, where right. you can compare that are on the same street. Even so within the every, same city. Every deal like is totally occurring. different. Yeah. So different traffic counts, yeah. different income. Right. Then you've got the cost approach. And, and that's going to be, hey, if we were to build this today, what does it cost to build? You um, should be buying properties less than it costs to build them. Just public yeah. service announcement. If the cost approach appraisal comes in bad, then you're buying the wrong deal. Yeah. I mean, you should be buying for, a, you know, I, Plaza West. We talked about that deal uh, last week on the podcast. To build a plaza, this, we bought it for like seven five. It's 122,000 feet. To build it now, I'm, I'm saying at least double than what we paid for it. Guaranteed at least double. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's a hard and fast rule that you can never pay more than uh, replacement value or replacement cost value because there are irreplaceable locations sure. uh, where the, the strength of the tenant and the income demands uh, a higher price. But it is something to keep in mind is where are you compared to cost? Because if you're in a submarket or uh, a suburb, and you're buying a commercial real estate, you know, multi-tenant retail or whatever, but there's a, a field across the street that somebody could build. They can, and then they can build it for less than you're paying for it. That's where the, yeah. the cost yeah. approach comes into play is you want to be less than cost. So then if someone builds next door, brand new, mm -hmm. it costs them more. So they're going to have to demand more rent. So they just can't steal all your tenants at the low rent. They've got to, they got to get people to pay a higher rent. That's why you want to be lower than cost. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that for a second because we talk about this a lot with our investors and when we put out our investment brochures and when we look at deals, we pay attention to that price per square foot number a lot yeah. and relate it to the cost of construction now. We bought a center in Broken Arrow. We paid probably 60 or $70 a square foot for it. So the rent we need to make money is significantly lower than the guy right across the street from us who built this brand new retail strip center that looks... 100 times better than ours. It's brand new. But I mean, you're at like 350 or $400 a foot. So imagine the rent that that guy has to generate or girl to, to pay their mortgage, right? It's yeah. a lot more than you. So you want to, I, I want to be at a little bit of a lower basis than that. 
Another example, right? When we're looking at tenants and we're looking at the rent of the tenants, we bought this deal in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and it's got a dollar tree that pays like six or seven dollars a foot or something. But it's such a dense submarket. There's no there's no excess land for somebody to build, and the cost of construction for somebody to go and build a comparable dollar tree, even if there was space to build, it would be so much more that they would have to demand fifteen dollar a foot. More than double. Exactly. So I feel really good about that Dollar Tree lease because I know they can't get anywhere close for anywhere uh, close to what they're paying. Um, yeah. So they'll renew, right? So what is the other? We've talked about comp sales. We've talked about the cost approach. Uh, the last uh, method of appraisal is the income approach. Arguably the most, one of the, I mean. For commercial real estate, it's maybe one of the most important because what it does is it allows the appraisal appraiser to put uh, the value of these properties, you know, based on the income they produce. So it kind of levels the playing field. And that's how most people are buying these properties. Like, I know we said we looked at the cost approach. I know we say we look at the comparable approach, but at the end of the day, we want to know how much money we're making. Right. And so, yep. does, so does everyone else. And so they look at the cap rate, uh, on this building versus the cap rate of similar buildings that have sold. Correct. And, and so then what they do, just like with a residential house, does this have a pool? Does this have three car garage, whatever they're saying? Okay. Uh, is this better located? This, this market is, is Tulsa. That is that, is that as good as Oklahoma city? Maybe Oklahoma city slightly better. Maybe Dallas is even better. Maybe in Dallas, this will be a seven cap Oklahoma city. It's a seven and a quarter cap and in Tulsa, it's a seven and a half cap. Right. Uh, just because of the strength of the market and the comp sales and all that. So that's how they use the income approach, uh, to value the property. Okay. So you've talked about these three methods. Does one appraisal have all three methods on it or could it have one or more? Or? Typically they have all three. Oh, all three. And, and they'll come to a slightly different value on each. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they'll use their, you know, their professional opinion as to where it ultimately oh. comes oh, in. Oh, they'll come on. They'll finally come down and give you one, one. They'll give you number, one number. One yeah. Number. Okay. It's, right. it's higher than one or two of them. It's lower than one, right. you know. Okay. It's kinda... So let's say that number comes in and it's less than you, highly, uh, a lot less than what you anticipated. Is there any... Is there anything you can do? Can you either talk to the appraiser and try to give him or her additional information? Can you go to another appraiser? That which, rarely works. Uh, I, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't uh, think it would. Your, your recourse. I tell you it on my house and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, your recourse on a commercial deal is to negotiate down the purchase price if the, with the seller if the appraisal doesn't come, to the, come up to the purchase price. Has this ever happened to us before? I don't think so. Not on the buy side, right? But we, we've tried to sell an asset where yep. the appraisal didn't. So walk us through that. Guy, I, I do this well, every I don't, time. Well, I don't want to give details of that uh, specific sale, but it was a property that we had. Someone who was interested in buying it. We knew that, that they had uh, a lot of cash. We weren't really that interested in selling, and I wanted to get a premium if we were going to sell. And you, to you told them I told that. them that. I told oh, them that. I'm like, hey, it's going to be a high price. They agreed to pay it, but when the appraisal came in lower... Mm -hmm. than the agreed upon purchase price that what that did is it lowered the amount of money they can borrow. Now they have to bring more cash, which brings down their return or percentage return they make on that cash. And so they ended up not wanting to do the deal because of the appraisal and there wasn't anything I could do. Can't call the appraiser and say, Hey, you know, I'll, I'll pay you on the side or whatever. There's yeah. just none of that going on. So that didn't work. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> um, so one last distinction before we hop off here, um, let's talk about, you know, the different approaches when, when buying a deal through the lender's perspective. So a lot of the times we're going and we're getting pretty high leverage, but we're getting loan, uh, loan to value, right? And the value is the appraisal. So it's loan to appraisal is, is what they're comparing it against. The other way is, um, LTC or loan to cost. So you can get a, a, a lower LTC, but your costs may include expenses that haven't yet happened yet. So you're going to say, hey, I need to escrow four or $500,000 for these repairs, these renewals, all of my closing costs, whatever. So I'm buying the property for $5 million, but really my cost is $5.5 million. And you can get lenders to lend you loan to cost instead of loan to value and, and get a lower percentage, but sometimes more money, right? Yeah, uh, sometimes you can do that. I would say uh, a lot of times, if it's a rehab situation, yep, the, you're right. The lender will give you so much for the acquisition and it'll loan you additional dollars for the CapEx that you're going to spend. And they may escrow that until you've improved the property and then they, they overfund after that. Gotcha. Uh, but a lot of times when you're acquiring, they're going to take the lower of 80% of loan to value or loan to cost. The reason they do that 
is let's say the appraisal comes in really high. They don't want to be at a, a 90% uh, LTV. Right. Uh, and so they will say the lower of or the lesser of, and that, that way, regardless if the appraisal comes in high, they're only going to loan you 80% of what you're paying for the property. Another super important point is at the beginning of this year, I know we just talked about Plaza West and the amazing success we have with that deal, but in January that appraised for seven and a half million dollars, even though the value of it was, was nine something was over nine because we appraised it last month and it was like nine and a half with the pad sites. Yeah. So that should tell you, it, it's not an appraisal as if they're just looking in their magic crystal ball and they're saying, Hey, this is what this property is worth. Like a broker's opinion of value. They're not. It's, it's really a justification. They're trying as hard as they can to protect the lender and say, hey, um, bank or who lending institution, we will, uh, we will give you comfort that this property is actually worth that and here's why. So it's, it's nine times out of 10, you're doing it for a lender, whether it's, it's a purchase or a refinance or you're selling a little out parcel or whatever it is. The appraisal nine times out of 10 comes back good. It comes back good and, and let's end on this point. The appraisal is purely uh, an opinion of one person that you've hired. It is mainly to protect the bank, mm -hmm. uh, maybe to protect you if you're a complete idiot and you're, you know, to keep you from overpaying. Uh, but, but reality is, is that the value can be whatever it is you think it can be. Plaza West is an example where, yeah, we, we agreed to pay seven and a half. And so when we got it appraised, the appraiser uh, used our contract and the price we negotiated and came back about that number. Uh, but six months later, we get it appraised, having them reevaluate those out parcels and it comes back in at nine, nine and a half. Yeah, wow. So I just want people to know, um, don't be limited by the appraisal value is that use creativity, uh, evaluate the, the property you're looking to buy, look on how you can improve the income, improve the tenant base and, and just be optimistic about, Hey, what could the appraisal be? given market improvements, given some changes in the property, because the, the, the appraisal you get when you buy it is not necessarily what it's going to be worth even just six months later. Well, there you have it, guys. That is a deep dive into appraisals and, and kind of how we use them, how we order them, timeline to get them back, all of the information you need. If you have any more questions, just comment down below and we will get back to you on the appraisal or shoot us an email. We would be happy to answer your question or talk to you through it. But an appraisal is pretty easy. Lender's going to do it about a month process and nine times out of 10, like we said, it, it, it comes in fine. So not much to worry about there. And Brian's got to go to an OSU game yeah. like yeah, right now. now. So we got to end. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Go Pokes.